So, Laurie, I'm fascinated with how you started the Ohana Arts. And if you could tell us a little bit about uh, how you got the organization off the ground. It sounds like you've done a lot of partnerships with different organizations. So if you could talk a little bit about getting the organization started, that would be great. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, Jenny and I lived in New York for about seven years or so. Um, and when we were living here, we were, you know, we thought, oh, you know, we're going to come to New York. This is where we're supposed to be uh, to start a career. But oh my goodness, it was, you know, so did everybody else, you know. And <laughs> and so we got here and we started. Put, it was really funny. We put up flyers about teaching and like all these little tear offs and. Oh, and you know, when we didn't get calls back, it, we, you know, we started applying for jobs. It was just really hard to get a start here. And um, so one of the things that we realized is that we were going to have to create our own opportunities. And we were getting some gigs and actually we were traveling for gigs and things, but it wasn't consistent work and especially in the beginning. And so uh, we started a performing, or sorry, a chamber music group called Music a la Mode. And it was uh, most of our friends from Yale and, um, and a couple of friends of mine from, you know, from before who had gone to Juilliard. And we started uh, a chamber music series. And actually it wasn't too far from here. It was uh, actually at, uh, at the um, uh, St. Mark's at the Bow in the Bowery. Mm -hmm. And we did a concert series. Um, and that sort of gave us our start in learning how to produce. And the first year we did it, we had a concert um, with, we, we, it was women in the arts. We, we decided, to, and I don't know what made us think we could do this. I mean, we, we, we slaved away doing this, but we had women artists uh, from all over and we had a curator selecting work and we had women composers. And we put all the artworks that were selected and, and, and also had the music of these composers performed by our group in St. Mark's. And it was a really lovely, lovely concert with a message. And the nice thing about it is it brought artists in that wouldn't normally go see classical music and vice versa. It brought musicians in that didn't normally go to see art. So it was really a wonderful thing. And so we did that series for a couple of years. And in the midst of that time, Jenny and I came back from a gig, I think it was like two in the morning or something. We were like, you know, why, does, why do we feel like this? Performing is great, but why do we have this sense of emptiness after? And we realized that when you perform, you have this wonderful rush and high that you and the audience experience for about two hours. And that, but what, what the takeaway from that is that everybody moves on and you go to the next thing. And, you know, we realized we wanted to give back. And Jenny had uh, gone to Interlochen and we wanted to start a program like Interlochen in Hawaii because if Jenny hadn't gotten a $4,000 scholarship for, to attend the program and also uh, airfare covered by Emerson Electric, she was, one of the, she was the only student in the state to get that scholarship. Uh, she said she would never have been able to afford it and she would never have realized what was out there. She wouldn't have had that experience. And so she wanted to create that for more people in Hawaii. And that's why we started Ohana Arts. And our training from doing things like music a la mode and doing PR and doing fundraising and all that stuff and coming up with the ideas that really sort of spearheaded uh, our efforts with Ohana Arts. And when we started, one of the things that we did um, to get our name out there was these living room concerts. We would actually go into people's homes and we would perform. And we, we didn't charge anything, but we had donation envelopes and we had baskets and sometimes we would make fifty dollars and we were like oh my gosh that's gas money you know and it was really interesting the the, the concerts where we would make fifty dollars were the ones we were most excited about it because it would be in the mansion in diamond head or kahala and we'd be like oh my god all these wealthy people and we realized that wealthy people are the ones that hold on to their money and that's why we made fifty dollars um, <laughs> it was always the concerts for teachers or, you know, we did one for Alpha Delta Kappa members and we would make $1,300 a concert at those concerts because those were the people who, who really saw the value in teaching kids about the arts. And we made, you know, we, we, we got our start. We did, we did, it was grassroots, but it really was amazing because not only just performing for 20, 30, 50 people at a time, you know, it seems like it might be unproductive, but what was amazing is that one connection led to the next and led to the next and either it would lead to a student learning about our program and joining us or it would learn, it would lead to, you know, finding other donors or finding other concert venues. And uh, that's how we, we started our first year with 23 students in the program and most of them came from the school that we were cross-registered through, the Hong Gonji Mission School. The next year we had over, I think, 60 students in our program and they came from all sorts of schools and now we represent we have 30 schools from around the island that are represented and we have over 
80 students uh, in the program. You must have people helping you with that. Yes, yes. Well, we, we, we do. We have, well, first of all, we are, we have a lot of, um, you know, families and things that, you know, have, it's word of mouth that spread the word. But we also do a tremendous amount of fundraising. We still, we still do living room concerts from time to time, but now we like to charge because we feel like if we're going to make a decent amount of uh, money, we have to charge, you know, at least sometimes $150 a concert and such. So, you know, we do charge uh, for, for admission. But we also write grants and, you know, we have wonderful support. Jenny's parents uh, in Hawaii are always helping us administratively. Uh, I mean, there's just, there's so many people that are volunteering right now. Um, we are still in a fledgling organization in the sense, I, I guess we're, we're beyond fledgling because we are in our seventh season. Um, but, you know, we're still at this point where we're, we're doing most of the work ourselves in order, in order to sort of stay afloat. But we do um, a lot of grant writing. We do fundraising. We have, you know, we do have a nice little donor base now. Um, and that's, you know, that's pretty much where, you know, intuition covers some of that cost. Ticket sales come up some, cover that. But we're always looking for no, more ways to, to, um, to, to make money.